I feel quite definitely that we're working towards world peace. And if British Aerospace are trying to sort them out, it's like having a child that's naughty. You're not going to smack it because you want to smack it. You're going to try and make that child understand that the world is a better place if they behave properly. I'm Phil Humphreys, 62 years young. I live in a village called Freckleton, which is in the northwest of England in Lancashire. The largest employer would be BA Systems, who are very well known for uh, developing, designing, test flying, manufacturing military aircraft. I started with them in 1978. By the time I'd actually finished at, uh, at BA Systems, uh, I had been a director uh, with the company in various guises, whether it was commercial, procurement, business development, for almost 20 years. I found myself in Saudi Arabia from the August 1990, all the way through to the following summer, when Iraq invaded Kuwait. There was an element of savagery that, that were demonstrated at the time by Saddam Hussein's forces that really had to be uh, driven out. We were able, thankfully, to provide Saudi with, with what they wanted in terms of military support, in terms of aircraft uh, and other military hardware. There was a hell of a lot at stake. I mean, it, it was, you know, one only has to look at the largest oil producer in the world being turned off overnight, as could have happened. It cemented our relationship with, with one of our strongest allies in the, the whole Middle Eastern region, Saudi Arabia. That was in our office in the first Gulf War. That's how real it was in terms of the potential for a different type of attack. Why don't you say toppings? Toppings, sorry, sorry. I think it should be toppings. Oh. All right, Zach, so half of that is yours. That's yours and Alfie's. I went to Saudi Arabia with him, uh, with our children, Mark and Sarah, for two years. I was there. We were told it was safe, the, none of the bombs would reach Riyadh and that. So we went out there fine, no problem. But then, of course, some Scud missiles were reaching Riyadh. There were quite a few hair raising moments when we had air raid warnings and we all had to dive into the bathroom, which was supposed to be the safest place. Um, and you, you could hear the bombs dropping. Um, and it, so it was getting a bit dangerous, so they decided then to, to evacuate all families. Once they had gone, and I knew they were back in the UK, the level of stress was minimal. And you definitely felt you were part of history. You couldn't ignore the sheer scale of what was taking place in Saudi Arabia at that time. I didn't want to miss a minute. It was what it was about. I wasn't leaving. Margaret, Hello. I'm after some nice flowers. To nice to see you. Do you know, that's the very thing I like to hear. It's music to my ears when people want to buy flowers. They're lovely. I was just admiring the, the, uh, the two there. The biggest employer, of course, is British Aerospace, but it's not just the people that they're employing. From a flower buying angle, as long as British Aerospace keep paying them, then they'll keep paying me. We are made safer because of what is being produced there. If something happens at the other side of the world, it won't be long before those fighter jets will sort it all out for us. And they're actually on our doorstep. And I always wonder if everybody really appreciates that. The, these foreign countries buy the planes. There's obviously a need for them. And we're not just purely and simply selfishly selling it. We're selling it because we want a better world for all of us. Because if people keep trying to blow us up and blow each other up, 
Where will we be? I'm going to have a pint of John Smith, please. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> In this area here, we've got two or three quite large employers. The, the biggest in this area is, is BAE. As a village, we rely quite heavily on, on them for the housing, people who are living around here, drinking at weekends, bringing the families out. It's become part of the community, really. I think people at BAE realise they're doing a job, which puts food on the tables for the families. I don't necessarily think that when people at BAE are there and they're designing things and whatever like that, I don't personally feel that they're thinking that what something may do. It probably is a bone of contention, but to me personally, I would rather have our people building aeroplanes which we know how they operate and things like that, rather than have another country building them. Saudi Arabia is a long-standing close ally of the United Kingdom. Fact, one has to respect that if your friend, you know, friends ask for help, um, you've, got a, you've got a decision to make. If we decided, I think, as a country, never mind as a company, to actually say, we will only deal with those who have the exact same demonstrable level of ethics as we do, the world's not like that. I've worked in aerospace factories in the past that have been attacked in the dead of night by people who have taken hammers to aircraft that are being built. You know, you take these things personally. It, it, to me, it was like somebody coming into my driveway and taking a sledgehammer to, to my car. I'd far rather be part of, uh, of an A-team being at the forefront of technology and leading the world. If you want to become a country that um, doesn't see the need for that and instead would like to make wheelbarrows and, and uh, pinball machines and fridge freezers or TVs, then that's a different view than I and many, many other people have got. This is the site of what became known as the Freckleton Air Disaster. It happened in August 1944. An American Liberator bomber actually crashed near enough into the village centre at Freckleton. A wing broke off and went straight into the infant classroom. A total of 61 people were killed in the disaster. The servicemen are actually buried elsewhere, so this is the, these are the civilians, the school children and the, the teachers. The conflict uh, that, that, that is ongoing in Yemen, that is Saudi Arabia looking to protect uh, its own interests. In any warfare, I think the whole concept of children and innocent people being killed is utterly horrendous. Nobody wants to see that. It depresses me greatly. But one thing's for sure, I wouldn't link who made the, the bombs or, or the aircraft that was involved in that. I wouldn't take that personally, not in any way, shape or form. It's a big bad world out there and it's not necessarily shaped in the way that we want it to be.